Flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Atari's move. I'm the royal archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And this video right here is going to be about the book of John. Now, the book of John is the virtues and principles of the Leo constellation. Remind you, this is literature. This is art. So think about Shakespeare, a.k.a. if you're thinking about a movie, think about the Bible as if we was making a movie if light can talk. Same way if you watch Osmosis Jones and blood cells can talk to convey to kids how your blood cells work. This is kind of the art that they was utilizing with the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Utilizing virtues and principles, calling these things great lights or lesser lights, and giving them mouthpieces, a.k.a. the word, making virtues talk. So if a light was floating around talking like a human, like if you anthropomorphize it in some way, shape, or form, then this is what the motherfucker book is about. That's why each character has a sun behind them or a light or a planet behind them or some way, shape, or form. But for the most, or a pillar or a column, if you got one of the uh, Great England Bibles and things of that nature. But that's another uh, video. Now, for the most part, this is going to be about the book of John. Now, the book of John is the virtue and principles of the Leo constellation. So the book of John is um, about the fifth house and it's about the Leo constellation. And John is just a different term for what we're calling the Leo constellation right now, based upon how they was utilizing their Christianity and uh, Christian astrology and things of that nature, where Christianity is just a different astrology. And so, so different terms, man means masculine light, woman means feminine light, all right? So keep that in motherfucking mind. It's not talking about male and females. Then Masons got y'all lost when they forced y'all and created a language and made y'all start calling yourself these things and moving in these type of virtues and principles. And that goes beyond what we're going to talk about right now. But for the most part, like I said, let's get into this. Now, since... John or the book of John is about the Leo constellation then for the most part then you know this is going to be um, a heavy emphasis talking about the sun and when we're talking about the Leo constellation or the fifth house anytime the sun is going through that period of time we are experiencing the fixated period of the summer solstice so keep that in mind also so that'd be what late July to late August now, for the uh, based upon this calendar, this man Masonic calendar that we're utilizing at the moment. Now, we're going to get into um, a verse because now that you know the virtues and principles that all John, the book of John is going to be talking about, now you know the kind of ground basis of it. So we're, we're going to get to an actual verse. Now, one of the most popular verses in the book of John is chapter 3, verse 16. Now, before we even get into the terminology, let's get into the gematria and the numero numerology of it, right? It's 3, chapter 3, verse 16. Now, chapter 3, right here, right? Uh, now, the number 3 represents surroundings. So, that's in the third dimension or your surroundings or the force field or things that you're looking at externally that's in your uh, environment at the moment. That represents 3, right? Then we have 16. Now, this is gematria. Let's break it down. Um... Numerology before we add value, the art of deduction, subtraction, and mental mathematics. You have uh, number one. One represents an individual. Six represents sex or the joining of two energies to create another one, a.k.a. just the art of paying attention to something or, or seeing yourself in that whatever you, that you're paying attention to. Now, so this is an exalted individual within a surroundings. So you got three, the surroundings. Then you got one. A shape and form, a numino, then you got six in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension. So this is a shape and form that's above the surroundings in some way, shape, or form. Now, we got to bring the one and the six together. This is seven. So this is an angel number, a.k.a. not the angel numbers y'all be seeing on the internet. Seven is the only one once we start to talk about adding a masculine uh, thought to whatever your virtues that you're lost in at the moment in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension. Remember, you got one, you got one masculine, four masculine, seven masculine, two feminine, five feminine, eight feminine, three, six, nine, androgynous. But we're not gonna get too far into that why it's like that right now. You should uh so for the, you should be aware of these things if you're on my channel. Now, for the most part, when you add that, that's seven. So this is a higher thought. Feeling, virtue, angel, angle, light ray that could rise above 
any type of lore, animalistic desire that's in the third dimension, circumstance, or situation. So 316, three surroundings, 16, that equals seven, one plus six, that's a, high, we broke it down how we got there, that's a higher thought about something that's dealing in a surrounding. So this could be a thought, feeling, and in this case, we're talking about planets. So this is a higher planet that's above Earth or the third dimension or the death realm, one, two, and third dimension, you know what I'm saying, Ram three. And this is something that's floating around in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension because it's number seven. So it's in that realm as a spaceship being an individual or a thought form being an individual. You see what I'm saying? And it's masculine. So it's a thought form, not a feeling. Feminine is feeling, masculine is thought. Keep that in mind. So feminine ain't nothing but a thought you can't see anymore because light bending in on itself and went below the horizon. And we're utilizing Jewish mysticism because they got y'all lost in up and down. So that's the... That's the um, the overall concept. So the verse is gonna be is gonna have something to do with that virtue, aka something that's above the surrounding or the ground that's descended in some way, shape, or form because it's seven, and we know angel is an angle, a light that's above the third dimension, but it's still e de evolved from the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension. You see what I'm saying? Now, otherwise, it wouldn't be apparent. As a thought for more feeling or virtue in the one to a third dimension. Now, here's the thing. Let's get into the actual verse itself. Now, it say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth, believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life. So we know this King James type things or whatever like that. All right. So I just read it real quick. Now, we got to get your mind put into the right mind frame of the artistry that and... and the Shakespeare type of energy that they was in when they was writing these things. Now, for the most part, for God, this is another term for thy or thee, a.k.a. anytime referring to yourself or referring to another individual going through their own internal battle in some way, shape, or form. So this is always referring to your spirit. So keep that in mind also. So for God, so love the world. World represents something that's made up, a creation, a worldview, an intellect, a concept. Right. So this is a concept, not existence, not overall existence, a concept. Right. So for God, so love the world, a.k.a. for the spirit, so love this worldview that he he is another term for light. Right. That he gave his only begotten son. Now he gave his once it turned into his that he light de became de evolved and it became his. So that means a light descended in some way, shape, or form. So that, remember, when we're utilizing language, like we're talking about it right now, this is not how these signs and symbols was made up for us to create trigonometry and monads and language and signs and symbols and symbolism off of. You see what I'm saying? They wasn't made. So when we're conveying this right now, you may think, oh, he don't know what he's talking about because when you're reading the Bible, you're looking at it as if, a man and a woman is talking. So, oh, God said this, and then Peter told these people this, and you're looking at it as far as the mind frame of the language we're using and, and, and how we're conveying messages between each other, where it wasn't like that from the people who made the Bible. The people who wrote the book, these words wasn't utilized for mankind yet. These words was utilized for the way of how we act. And interact with each other and things of that nature. Then we started calling these names our body parts and stuff like that. Because Jewish mysticism start to get y'all lost into the brain and the flesh. So it turned into phallic religion and and and, and um, ceremonies where you guys are drinking the blood and eating the flesh of some type of uh, being. And wanting to be possessed and something to live through you and stuff like that. That's another video. But like I said, here's the thing, right? You have to understand this for clarity. So for God so loved the world that he... That light gave his only begotten son. That he gave his. That light became de-evolved and only begotten son. Now, begotten. Begotten means bringing something forth. Bringing something to existence. So when you bring something to existence, that means when you become aware of something in some way, shape, or form. So this is you putting your, creating like a sex, a six energy, right? Because that's what this verse wrapped up under. You seeing yourself into something. So it's always going to be back to supported by individuality. You can't go no further than that. I don't care what kind of knowledge or how long you went to school. It's going to reach back to individuality. So this God 
descended its individuality and its individuality is being explained as a form of light by it saying it's masculine by using the term he see what i'm saying so for god so loved the world this your spirit so loved the world view this thought that's a light that that he that light it's explaining the light now it's explaining the world that he that light gave himself aka his de-evolved only begotten, aka as an individual son. Gave, so when you give your begotten son, that's when you give your individuality to something. And when you give your individual when you give your individuality to something, that's a different term for you paying attention to something. And that's spiritually speaking, esoterically speaking, this is how you de-evolve. This is how you bring yourself down as a spirit. When you start to pay attention and be aware to things, you create that light to get lost in that bring you down into that realm of reality. And if you get too lost into that, you start developing feelings, attachments, and stuff like that. So this is understanding how to speak as God and understanding the language of angels and demons before you think you a winky dink as apologetics or theologian who don't know shit. And just being taught whatever you know. Because you probably got taught to tell me right now some logical stupid shit like I'm adding to the Bible or whatever like that. No, no. You was the Bible have already been added to once it became King James, once it became written down, once it became the Mishnah, once it became the shit was written on your heart was already added to at that point. Keep that in mind. Now, here's the thing. Now, when you give your when you give your individuality or your energy to something, that who's ever believeth on that on him, keyword him, that whoever believed on that de evolved light, right? Him, light, should not perish, but have internal life. So what it's basically saying is when you give your individuality to something, right, those around you who believe in whatever you're paying attention to or believe in you, how you see yourself, right, you will not perish, a.k.a. you can live forever internally and others. People will remember you, same way how y'all remember Jesus Christ. Now, in this terminology right here, this is, this is, this, this is, that's a virtue and principle. From an angel perspective, from an astrology astronomy perspective, it's talking about the sun coming down, de-evolving itself during the Leo constellation because it's uh or during the fifth house during the fixated period of the summertime because it's the book of John and we know when the sun de-evolved in the summertime, right? It's it's in the third dimension on the ground basis for the longest because it's the most heat. A.K.A. the sun is closer to earth, to the number three. You see what I'm saying? That seven, that one, six, seven figure verse, I mean, chapter three, verse 16. The 16 is that the sun, the motherfucking three is the surroundings. And it de when it de-evolves, right, it creates temperament. Now, this chakra is closer to this chakra, so it's going to create more temperament, astrology, and astronomy temperature, what we call summertime, aka it's a lot more heat, and the, the sun is not bringing heat on its own. It's just closer to this chakra. So anytime two high velocity moving vehicles or objects is close to each other, in between creates an orb of what you call a water cycle. But on a larger scale, astro astronomically speaking, uh, we would look at this as a um, summertime or or solstice and equinoxes so when you're looking at um so if you want to say i'm pseudo you just don't know how to think clearly because if you think clearly right i told y'all a star is a big body of water from antarctica all the way to the eastern continents so think about it like this you it rained in your city because you got what, what pieces this big old star is everything in between that everything came up out of it so we got seas and rivers and things of that nature so yeah you're going to have Thunder, um, you're going to have storms and it rain like a water cycle. But if you think about it from a larger perspective on a micro scale, right, then uh, from spring, spring to winter time ain't nothing but a macro version of a water cycle. See what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. So that lets you know stars are water just on a different frequency vibration when we talk about density levels. That's why we call it mass, L-I-T-E, things that's light and weight. You know what I'm saying? And when the masses come together, it gives off a spectrum. So it's light and weight, but it gives off impactful influence when we start to talk about um, esoterically speaking. And this is the concept of planets. You see what I'm saying? Stars are water. Planets are water. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, now, for the most part, so let's run this down one more time. For for uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish but have eternal life. So in a nutshell, it's basically saying, right, uh, when someone believe in you, you can live forever in some way, shape, or form because you can live internally inside the minds and hearts of the people of the world in some way, shape, or form. And in that instant, you as a spirit can take that light that everyone who believed in or add more fuel to and you can sustain yourself into that forever so you won't perish, a.k.a. it plays out like a dream. Or it can become a nightmare in some way, shape, or form based upon your spirit basking in that belief, that lie, or that imagination that you have made others believe in when your ass was alive in some way, shape, or form. And that's carrying out the Leo energy in some magnitude. So the book of John is basically a different terminology of the fifth house in the Leo constellation and the fixated point um, of the summer solstice. Flight boss, bitch, you know. For sure. Eee.